posts, and beside me is, as always, the almighty troll slayer, Claire. And I got to tell you what, guys, we've got a show planned for you that's amazing. We have with us Will from the Weekend Homestead. How are you doing this evening, sir? Back again, and everything's going great. Looking forward to a great show tonight. That is awesome, because, man, look, we got a list, and lists don't lie. So we've we got, got a list. Yeah, it feels like Smokey and the Bandit. We got a long way to go in a short time to get there. Something like that. I'll leave so what, what tickles your fancy, dude? You want to you want to start out with, like, um, lighting. We're going to go over some AdSense. We're going to talk some, some things about how to uh, the nine pillars to making money on YouTube without actually being on AdSense. So what tick I think I want I, – I personally would like to have that one wait just a bit. But what is your fancy, sir? Well, we've bumped lighting two weeks in a row. I think we should start there because that's one that, like, I, I got two emails this week going, hey, wait a minute, I thought you guys were going to talk about lighting. And then we bumped it, and then we bumped it again. So maybe we should start with that one. I would agree. Um, okay. So lighting basics. Uh, from my perspective, if you're in professional video, lighting is ridiculously expensive. Uh, and I don't know why they charge so much, but when you're like doing like when I say real video, I'm talking like either commercials, high end commercials, or you know upper line pro movie kind of thing. They have different brands like Lowell and Ari, and then a regular Ari light. If you were just gonna get like a 500 watt spot with barn doors on it, and they're called barn doors, so you can control where the light goes, you can just bend them in the way. That would seriously cost you about $800 for one light and one stand. And you need lighting, but it does not need to be so expensive. And we're going to talk a little bit about some of the tools you can get that are, number one, cheap. And then some tools that you can get that won't cost you a penny. They're more like tricks. So I guess let's jump off into there, bro. Why don't you take it, and then we'll just bat it back and forth. So... I know that you know the. I come from the different angle, which is I use inexpensive house lights to do most of my lighting. Um, I'll do tricks outside and that kind of stuff. So I have to yield to your expertise on the professional lighting side of it. But regarding what I use in the house, one of the best things to do use is stay away from fluorescent light bulbs. You know, the little curly ones and yep. uh, tubes and stuff like that. I stay away from that kind of stuff. I'll try to get an LED light bulb or an old-fashioned incandescent light bulb. I can't believe I call it old-fashioned, but old-fashioned incandescent light bulb with a nice shade on it. 60-watt light bulb, one or two of them in your kitchen if you're doing a, a cooking thing on either side of you, kind of facing towards you, would light up the space perfectly. Like tonight, I'm using two incandescent lights on either side of my laptop here, just on the other side of the camera, playing at me this way, and then I have the regular lighting here, and that's how the front of me is lit up but the background is kind of dark so that's that's like one trick you can do is use your household lighting to your advantage and always keep your camera in front of the lighting and don't light behind you like in front of you it would be probably some short ones well i agree with that um but in, and i'm going to add to that uh when you're saying the curly q cfl bulbs um those come in color temperatures just like professional lighting and you what you know what you have to do is you have to match the color temperatures of the light you're you're in for example my room in here i'm going to take i'm going to do a little thing i'm going to show you outside right here i'm going to move the camera go slower i've got a light a couple lights there but i'm in a room that has tons of windows and so i cannot pretty much combat the sun when it comes to lighting you're not going to win unless you just completely black out your room but the, the, the trick is this. Sunlight has one color temperature. Those CFL bulbs have another color temperature. The incandescent light bulbs have a different color temperature. And what that means is the old incandescents, they might look a little orangey to you. And then the CFLs can look fluorescent, like green or bluish. And it's all based on the color temperature of the light. I have, in these light kits right here, I have CFL color uh, uh, CFL um, curly Q bulbs that are daylight temperature. And that's, I picked that specifically for my room because I've got so many windows here, I can't really black it out. So I'm not going to fight against the sun. I want to use the same color temperature as the sun. And the whole, the whole reason I'm rattling this off is because if you go to Home Depot or you go to Lowe's, or you go to where Walmart or wherever it is you buy, you got to take a look at that box. Because the box is going to tell you a color temperature on it, and it would behoove you to get 
like a little card, download a card online that has like a color temperature chart. That way, you know that if you're stuck in a room that has all incandescent bulbs, that's actually fine as long as you go ahead and tell your camera, you do what's called a white balance. You tell your camera, this is white and not that orangey looking thing over there. And so it will self adjust to make sure that whatever you tell it is white is white. Now the problem that will happen is if you have mismatched colors, the camera won't know what to do. It'll freak out and it'll keep switching back and forth trying to figure out which one it's supposed to be closer to white. So I wanted to just make that distinction with the light bulbs because you can get the curly Q light bulbs in different color temperatures. I personally don't like them, but they're cheap and I like affordable. Let me ask you a question then, because it's probably the same one everybody in the chat room is. So when I do some video and I've had the curly Q light bulbs or the, the tubes or any of that kind of stuff, I actually look kind of blue actually. Why is that? Well, it, it's because of the color temperature. Your camera, um, whatever it decided white is, is probably different from that that light bulb to your face. <laughs> That's probably it's probably going. Oh, okay. Here's white, and it's a happy medium between that bulb, you know, the light coming off the bulb, and your face. And so it will adjust. And actually, that's how um, big movie studios will do that. They'll give uh, movies a certain look, like a um, a war movie. They'll they'll make it like kind of colder looking. They'll 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 take it and and uh, use lighting that will tweak it so it looks kind of bluish, greenish, and maybe just a little bit hazy. Or the um, say the matrix style movies where they're in the rooms with all the le you know the fluorescent bulbs they do that on purpose they're jacking with the camera to create a look in your case it's that it can't figure out what white is okay so now do all cameras automatically adjust color well yes and no um most uh let's say most consumer cameras are going to adjust automatically uh, in some cameras that are a little bit higher up on the food chain, you know, if you're hitting the $400, $500 range for a camera, you can probably turn it off. And, and that's basically an auto white balance. And in that case, you can, um, you can carry around with you a card that is pure white. And then you tell the camera, this is white in this situation. And that way, everything else will look natural and normal. And just a fun side fact on why a lot of, um, of the uh, news crew guys, the guys who are the ENG guys, electric, you know, you know camera, the, the guys that are out there filming the people, they will generally wear white tube socks. And the reason why they will is because if they don't happen to have a white balance card, they can always white balance right off their socks. So fun fact there. So then let me ask you one more question. Let's say you go from a space that's dark and then you go to a space that's light. And all of a sudden, there's this weird scenario where you can't get good lighting when you're going. Because let's say you're in your barn or you're outside, and then you go inside, and all of a sudden, you have this weird light situation. How do you combat that? Well, even if you look even on the, the uh, reality TV shows, um, it happens to them. And they're using $10,000, $20,000 cameras. It's not an issue with the camera. It's, it's an issue. You're exactly right. You're going from a dark space to a light space. So the camera automatically goes, oh, crud. Bam, and they change the uh, it changes the iris, so you can try to get around it if you had a lot of professional lighting that that people will come behind you like that and hold it, or you can try your best with these little LED light rings. There's some light rings that can fit on the front of your camera that will have you know 30 or 40 or 50 LED bulbs that that keep the light more constant. But I don't think you're ever going to get it to the point where it's just Boy, it looks great in here, and then it looks great in the sun. Um, that's generally too drastic of a change. You can minimize it, but even the big TV shows don't even deal with it. They just know that this is how it is. It's a reality show. Okay, let me let me clarify one point, though, and it's probably the same question going one step further, is you've talked about all this gear and all this equipment, and you're obviously much more knowledgeable than I am in lighting. What are your two tips for going on the cheap. Let's say you don't have lighting, you don't have whatever, 
give me something you can do that doesn't cost any money. Because a lot of these guys are starting out as new YouTubers. I get that email a lot. Since we started this show, a lot of people have been saying, hey, I'm a new YouTuber. I don't have a lot of money or I'm just getting into this. What are some tricks? Let me hear your tricks. Okay. Well, there, I'm going to give you more than two. Uh, and um, the first one is if you don't have any money and you want to improve your lighting situation, a couple things are just basic, basic things. If you're outside, you do not put your back toward the sun. Even though it's bright, you think, because what's going to happen is you want the light coming toward you and hitting you on the face at least from a, a slight angle or right on or a slight angle this way. But if you do it from the back, what's going to happen is the camera is going to adjust to the amount of light that the sun's putting out, and then that will in turn make you completely dark. So face the camera, that's really, really important. Other things are, you know, you can make gadgets that don't cost you anything. Uh, you can take even a poster board and uh, use it as a reflector. Uh, what's even better than that is is one of those um, those you know window uh, the in the in the car window reflectors that have the, the fold out like silver thing. You can use those as a reflector if you if there's no way around it and you have to be you know back to the sun. You can set it up or put it at an angle where it's going to put enough light on your face. So that you're not dark lit here. Um, there's a ton of stuff, man. Uh, in terms of lighting, just be wise. Don't have multiple colors in the same room. Uh, and for example, in this room, I have my daylight temperature bulbs, and I've got CFLs back there, but notice they're not on. And I've got a different incandescent over there. And but you've got to make sure that you're not fighting against what you already have. So that's an easy thing to do for anybody that is just making videos at home or whatever. That will make your videos increase in, in awesome viewability by a lot pretty quick. Yeah, no, I see a couple of po uh, people here in the chat talking about, you know, um, reflect off the white and uh, don't have backlighting and things like that. I always, I always, when I'm outside, I'm really cognizant of, okay, the sun is right there. The camera's right here. I'm right here. And I always try to keep, you know, the, the sun facing towards me and not a situation where my back's to it. In fact, like I did a video a couple of weeks ago where we were outside and we literally turned around every time we wanted to do the, the conversation or whatever it was to make sure we were facing the right direction, even though we were headed that direction. So, yeah. And, and another thing, and, and this is, uh, you can do this without spending money. I want I want, I'll share with you the light kit that I got just because it was really cheap. Um, but if you have an area where you can set your stuff up and it and generally it stays like a set, you know, um, that is hugely advantageous to uh, making a video real quick because there's so many times when I'll just get a, a, an idea in my head and I'll be like, you know what, that's a good idea for a video. Uh, for example, I did one today and it was basically about, um, <laughs> I lost it, the difference between uh, opportunities and interruptions. And all I did was I, I sat down in my area, I turned on my lights, and I went, go. And it looks good because I have my lighting set. And that, you know, if you if you even have some extra lamps laying around, um, there are tricks you can do to make a lamp look pretty good. Uh, but having something already set will increase your productivity so incredibly fast. Now, using reflectors and um, shades, that is huge. Like, so let's say you don't have any professional lighting. Okay, that's fine. You can take the lampshade off of a regular lamp. And then if you put it a little bit at a distance away from you, it's not going to put a hot spot on your face. You don't want the hot spot, but you can also use light to bounce it off the ceiling. I'll do that a lot to just give a fill to a room. I'll take a light and I'll angle it straight up so it bounces down and it adds kind of a soft um, effect to the room. But you can use also to your advantage any old piece of cardboard and you can angle it so that it will shade certain areas but light certain areas that you do want and that doesn't cost you a penny yeah no i just i, I know somebody in the chat here asked about how i did the tabletop light up because i have a tabletop rig that we use for our our live show and actually that one i i went to one of the the guest bedrooms in the house and i just took the two lamps that were on the 
um, nightstands and I took the shades off of them, set them up, and then I put some cardboard, just a piece of white cardboard kind of behind them to kind of reflect down in that area and do that exact thing where I was able to light up that little area where we were doing the tabletop demonstration and you know, I, it didn't cost me anything. I just took some lights from another room and moved them in there, did my videos and everything, and then put them back when we were done. Yeah, and, and another thing you can do that is um, really cheap is if you're going the lamp route or even, a, you know, more a, a step up like a Cowboy Studio light kit, uh, it's important that you have what are called, um, well, sh they're called scrims and they're called uh, soft boxes. But basically, I'm going to show this to you again here. These guys right here. You see them on the stand, and this this material right here, you can take it on or off, and then see the CFLs in there. But what that does is it diffuses the light in a way, so you're not getting a hot spot right on your forehead or your chin or something like that. But you can do that with regular um, stuff you have laying around the house. Just try to find something that you're going to keep far enough away from the light so it's not going to catch fire or anything like that, but you can use it as a diffuser. And um, it's kind of funny, one of the things you can use very effectively is, you know, those bacon splatter, great, great you know, like sh mesh things that are metal, and you hold it over the, uh, the bacon so it doesn't pop in your face. You can use that and set it right up, and it will diffuse the light, and it doesn't cost you anything. Just get creative with it and, and try to figure out, okay, what do I need to light? That's important. Um, and you need to make sure that your subject is not blown into the background that there's a distinction like you're saying with you in your face and then you've got your stuff behind you ours is not as pronounced but uh we kind of just went with it but um there's a lot of just get creative just what, what you need to do is you need to answer the question what do i need to light to make sure that my camera is going to have enough light to make it look great and not grainy Yep. No, I mean, for myself, probably lighting is the one area I struggle the most with. I mean, I do, I think I do really good outside for lighting, but inside it's, it's always, you know, sometimes it's hit or miss to get it right on. And other times just, it was completely off. And the worst part is, is you shoot a whole bunch of video and you think everything is great. And then what you don't realize is all of a sudden there was a shadow the entire time in the middle of your table and you know, you, you didn't even realize it. And now you just shot 25 minutes worth of video and if you would have checked it in the beginning or, you know, did a couple tests or something like that, you probably could have got it figured out. Yeah. And, and I'll tell you what, those are the world's worst moments when you're like, I got everything. I'm ready. I'm sitting down to edit. And then you're like, I don't have the shot. I don't have that shot. And it doesn't make sense if I cut that shot out of the story. So I got to drop everything and go back and get the shot. And by that time, the lighting outside has changed. The sun's gone down a little further or whatever. And when you cut to it, it's going to look like a different time. And that's a bummer. Um, but for those of you guys out there who might want to jump to a, a slightly like a beginner light kit, the one that I was showing you is called Cowboy Studio. I got three stands, a boom stand, so you can put like a hair light above you and two soft boxes for $200. And so for wow. those, of, yeah, no. And that's the sunlight lights. I mean, it's not exactly the, it's not exactly the greatest stuff. I wouldn't try to you know, move it around a ton just because it's kind of, you know, I'm not saying it's flimsy, but it's definitely not high end. But for 200 bucks, I've had no problem out of this for over a year now. Very, very cool. That's, uh, do you have a link to that that you can send out? There is a link in the description below, but is there anybody that has any questions they'd like to have answered about lighting? I've been jabbering and haven't been reading. Are there been any questions, Clarice? No. No, well, everybody just chatted. She said pantyhose work great. Uh, I saw that in there. Yep, that's true. And you can use those for a pop filter for your um, for your microphones too, so you don't get all the plosive P's and B's. All right, you, taking a look through here and see if there's any others. I I think that pretty much covers lighting. Where do you want to go from there, bud? Lighting? You know what? Um, let's take because uh, I do want to get to the nine ways. I think that's going to probably need to be a good half hour for that. The nine ways to make money on YouTube without using Amazon, um, or rather AdSense. Um, just, here's, a, here's an encouragement, guys. You don't have to spend a ton of money on any of this stuff. None of this video production. I mean, get the best camera you can afford, and then start getting creative. For example, on my um, 
I've got my white, you know, I've got my uh, webcast camera right here, uh, right in front of me, instead of on the top or down or there, because I don't want to look, make it look like I'm not talking to you. So I, I basically took a metal ruler and I bent it like this so that it hooks onto the computer here. And then I've got some padding here so it doesn't mess up my screen. And I got my camera right there. So that way it looks as though I'm talking straight to you instead of over here or up there or whatever. But the um, I think some of this stuff, you can jerry rig things and it, it does just as good as the professional widget, gadget or gadget that you, you would have spent, you know, $200, $500 on. And I think the thing that you really need to um, stress is you don't have to spend a lot of money on this. Solve the problem. Don't just go, well, what do I got to buy to fix it? Right. No, it's the same thing. Like a lot of people ask how I made that tabletop kit and I'll uh, show sure. you guys here. Yeah, sure. uh, bear with me for a second. But literally it's just a camera a little cheap webcam that's attached to a ruler that's zip tied up to a mountain of ceiling and then i just have you know an area on the table here i don't know if you guys can see it or not yep that has uh, where uh the material where it can record and it it cost me you know a yardstick some zip ties and uh you know like i said i took the the lights from over in the other room and a, a webcam that i had laying around for it wasn't doing anything so it's it's kind of easy to get things put together and we you know when you're a starting youtuber you don't have huge budgets to go buy all sorts of fancy equipment and you just kind of have to look for the tips and tricks on making stuff work yeah and and not to beat a dead horse but solve the problem don't just go well what do i gotta buy to get to fix this because nine times out of ten you could you've got stuff laying around the house that'll make it work i mean especially for microphones and stuff uh, one of the one of the funny things about a lot of the new DSLR mic microphone uh, camera combos is a lot of them are very noisy, like the um, uh, the Rebel TI five, I believe. Uh, when if if you if you change a focus or it changes an iris, you can hear it in the camera because it's touching the camera body so tight that you hear it go, bzz, 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 and in your final recording, and there's nothing you can do about it. Well, get creative. Take that microphone off of that and stick it on the tripod with some Velcro. Problem solved. You know, Velcro is definitely the shooter's best enemy. And by I like, shooter, I mean camera guy. I like duct tape, but I know that's kind of permanent on your camera. What about that gaff tape? I've seen that in the at the Home Depot or whatever it is or big box store, and that's pretty cheap. And that stuff comes off pretty easily on stuff too, right? Yeah, there's always a way to jerry-rig something up. And, and don't just rush to the computer to see what you're going to have to buy. That's my that's that's my encouragement, you guys, because most of these problems have an easy solution. It's just that we gotta, you know, crowdsource what we know and and figure it out. There's always a problem solver in there. There's this amazing thing called YouTube that you can go check things out on too. I, I don't know if you guys have heard of it. Or not. You may have heard of it. <laughs> so Claire Claire's saying she's got a couple of questions. No, I don't have questions, but there's a couple of questions up there. Okay, one bring them, it, sister. One of them is. Explain three-point lighting. Did you talk about that? Or? I have not explained three-point lighting. That is that's a little more advanced. Um, let me write that down. What, what was there another one? See if there's... Can you recommend a decent and expensive camera? Okay, that's, that's for a different time, too. Um, three-point lighting, guys. What that means is you have, obviously, three lights, and you're going to light your subject in a way that is going to... Um, allow the camera to have enough light in it to not be grainy to give it its best shot but what you're going to do is you're going to have what's called a key light which is out a little bit in front of you and it's meant to kind of wash over your skin or your face rather uh and kind of create a little bit of drama then you're going to have another one that's further off that's like a side fill and then you're going to have one behind you above you to do what's called a hair light and what that does is that lights up the edge of your shirt and the top of your hat and your hair and whatever and it separates you from the background while making sure you've got enough light here and you can move those front two lights around to give different uh, uh feels so that you know you can you can drop lights down and all of a sudden it looks really spooky or you can put it up a little bit higher and give you a, a, maybe a more uh i don't know introspective look but three-point lighting is just like that it's a triangle and you've got your subject in the middle and you use those elements to create moods, and that's that's huge. And that's one of those things that um, you can you can obviously it's an art, you know, create using light to create moods. 
Yeah, absolutely. You know, and the other thing is, is, and I don't know what your opinion of this is, but somebody told me this. One important thing to look at is um, making sure that you have enough light. You know, more light is better than less light. Like if it looks dark to you, it's probably dark on the camera. So make sure that you bump up your lighting sources in your different areas where you're recording the best you possibly can. Agreed, 100%. And you can actually look at the specs in the uh, the camera that you're either getting or want to get or have, and they'll tell you you're going to need X amount of lumens or you know illumination for it to look good at this kind of shutter speed and in various shutter speeds. And that's 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 a very deep. Uh, deep topic for photographers and videographers. That's not for this. But the point is this. The takeaway, if you can get any takeaway from the lighting, is make sure that your face is lit nicely. Don't be backlit by the sun. Make sure all of the lights, if you're inside, are the same color temperature so you're not fighting those different color temperatures. Your camera knows what to do. And thirdly, uh, get creative. Figure out ways to solve problems. Like my little thing here. I wanted to make it look like I'm talking to you instead of looking over there. So all it cost me was a 40 cent, you know, ruler bent it up. And there's probably somebody out there that sells a widget, gadget, or gadget for $50, but I didn't need it. So get creative with your, uh, your tools there. And also, um, try to create moods with your lighting. I mean, maybe if you're just doing, uh, videos on plants and, you know, you know, animal husbandry, that might not be that important. But uh, if you're doing something that you really want to convey emotion, start using that light in a way that it will uh, emulate what it is you're trying to communicate. Perfect. Claire, question for you. How many thumbs up do we have? Uh, I have to refresh the page. <laughs> oh, man. One second. Jeez, oh, Pete. 39. 39. We got 20, 20 slackers. Oh, I want everybody gives a thumbs up quick. There we go. All right, Will, I want you to start off with the um, the nine ways to make money on YouTube without using AdSense. Okay, so I've gotten dozens of emails in the last week about, hey, there's all these articles out about AdSense and how um, ad revenues are going down and, hey, how am I ever going to make money at YouTube and things like that. So I found an article online. Um, that's actually from the uh, same company that does Patreon. They have kind of an information thing, and um, I found an article that talked about the nine ways to make money. I'm going to list them off here, and then we can kind of talk through a couple of them here based on the ones that you guys are interested in. Um, and I know that the first one on the list uh, is uh, affiliate programs. So a lot of websites, a lot of different companies have affiliate programs you can get involved with. What an affiliate program is, is if you click on the link and somebody buys something on that website and they came from you, that person who they went to buy from will give you a small amount of whatever they spent on the website kind of as a reward for sending them you sending them that way. There's a lot of information. We could do a whole show on affiliates, but I just want to say that's one way you can do it. Second way, direct sponsorship or a brand deal. So I know a couple of YouTubers who make videos and they don't really make anything on the videos themselves, but because they get a ton of views on their content, certain brands, like I'll use Troy Built as an example. I have a friend who got sponsored by Troy Built. They send him a piece of equipment. He plays with it on his channel and kind of talks about all the different things that he can do with it and so on. He uses it in his backyard for his grass cutting videos and whatever else, and you can get those. I will say this, for starting YouTubers, brand deals, very difficult to do because what brands want to see is tons and tons of traffic. Usually when you get, you know, 50, 75, 100,000 subscribers in that range and you have pieces, you'll start seeing people come to you for brand deals. Next one, merchandising. Um, you could make merchandising for your channel. I'll give you an example here. This is the uh, Weekend Homestead coffee mug, in case you guys are interested. Actually, is we that, don't hey, sell it. Is that, is that one of those ambidest, de, de, amb, ambid, de, you know, the left hand, right handed amb, kind? Ambidest. Look at that. Either hand. I can hold the coffee cup with either hand, everybody. That is you amazing. Yours for nine easy payments of $1.50. Does it, does it stay warm if you hold it in your left hand opposed to your right? Uh, you know, there's a button on the bottom here that you can press that uh, just changes the setting, you know. The other nice. thing is it boosts your Wi-Fi. I don't know. Nice. Yeah. So merchandising, um, merchandising um, I think of guys like uh, Tommy at the Off Grid Nation. You know, he has his Off Grid Nation shirts and a lot of different people have that kind of stuff. 
And more than anything else, your fans, even when you're a small channel, might be interested in having something of your merchandising or whatever it is. And you could easily set up a website where you could sell a t-shirt or a little card or something like that. But merchandising is another way. Uh, the next one, digital products, courses, and eBooks. So I have a friend who has a YouTube channel and she has a fair number of subscribers. Uh, she's less than 10,000 subscribers, but she produced an ebook about cooking and uh, produced it in Microsoft Word and then um, worked with the company to get a little security piece on there to make the digital rights so people can't copy it. And then she sells it on her website for $3. So YouTube produces traffic that then ends up working their way over to her website and they buy those uh, eBooks. At three or $4 a shot, she's making a couple hundred dollars a month. YouTube's helping produce the traffic that's actually ending up at her spot to uh, do her thing, to do the cards. Next one, consulting and private lessons. I know that there was a channel just recently um, that I've worked with that had a class out at their uh, facility. So you could all go out there and they did a whole thing about beekeeping. So they did a bunch of videos about beekeeping on YouTube and then they said, by the way, on the, you know, the 20th of April or whatever it is, we're gonna have a class and you can sign up for whatever and we're gonna have a speaker come in and do their thing. I've seen a lot of channels do that. You don't necessarily have to have a big, group of subscribers to do that either. You can do that at any point in time. Um, services and freelance work. This one is actually starting to become really, really popular. So let's say you produce a bunch of high quality content on YouTube. You're just getting going as a, a, a YouTuber and you have videos out there. All of a sudden, um, like my buddy, he has a, a, a chance that where his church actually contacted him and said, hey, we wanna do a video for our website could we hire you to do a video? We saw your videos on YouTube about this and we know you have a camera and we know you can edit and we like what you're doing. Could you do it on our topic instead? And now you go from being the person in front of the camera to the person behind the camera. Uh, subscriptions and memberships. That one's a little bit more complicated. You have to kind of set up a website, but very similar to Patreon where you could easily um, you know, log into a website, go to theweekendhomestead.com and click on members and you pay a certain number of dollars and people can get extra content that way. Uh, one that I want to ask Brad about, because I know that you have a lot of information on this one, licensing your content. Uh, you make some videos and then you allow somebody else to use those videos for their means and they pay you money to do that. And then the last one, paid speaking gigs. That's number nine. We'll have this list in the, in the description down below the, the article that it came from, but that's, like I think of a guy like Casey Neistat, he makes videos on YouTube and he gets brand deals and all these other things. But the other thing he does, is he does speaking engagements where he'll go to a, a, a event or he'll go to something and he'll talk to the people at the event and he'll get paid to be there a couple hundred dollars or a couple thousand or whatever his rate card is. Um, Wranglestar actually did that with the Mother Earth News Fair and went and had a YouTube channel and went and did some speaking engagements with that to talk about timber framing and things like that. So there's tons of ways out there, but those are kind of the nine big ones. And all of them, if you if you kind of followed along, none of them said, hey, AdSense this or AdSense that. It was producing content on YouTube, getting engaged uh, individuals to watch your, your uh, video, and then picking one of the things on the list to bring it to your customers, or to your, uh, to your viewers, I should say. Cool. Uh, one thing I'd like to touch on real quick before we jump into, we'll just kind of breeze over a few of them, is the subscriptions slash memberships. Now, I have not dabbled with this at all, uh, just because it's kind of not our thing, but YouTube, actually, you can, when your channel gets big enough, you can have where people will pay you a fee to observe that content, so to view that content. Uh, and it is a subscription membership base. I don't know the stats on it because I've never done it. YouTube may take a cut. But if you have, if you were like, a, if you were a channel that was like super, super niche market kind of thing where let's say that you use woodworking tools, but you only do like, uh, who knows, whatever, toys. You make sure. toys, right? Um, you, that would be a prime uh subscription kind of place to because there's going to be you may not get the massive crowds which which you probably know because it's a very small niche but you may be able to do a class once a week where you you know go ahead and do a live broadcast but only the people that are paying that subscription can see it now that's up to you and it could be like you know I give everybody my normal information on YouTube and that's free but if you want the master class then it's going to cost you 5 bucks a month and that way, 
you can you can have that offered and YouTube does make allowances for that. I will say this, and there's one word that didn't come up in any one of these nine, which is Patreon. Um, a lot of people ask about Patreon. I didn't want to go the route of talking about kind of the obvious one where you could do that same piece. The problem is, is Patreon, you have to have a lot of subscribers on YouTube to get a small number of subscribers on Patreon to kind of transfer over. It's actually easier, I think, to do one of these other ones on the list. Um, give example, I know a channel that makes patches for their survival channel, and he made 100 of them. I think he pays a dollar a patch or whatever it is. He sells them on his website, and he sold out You know, once a month he does that. Well, that's an extra $500 or $1,000 he made, and he does it once in a while throughout the year. So it's a little bit special because you don't do it all the time, but he does a little patch drive, and the next thing you know, he's made some money on those, and, and it's a way for him to subsidize his channel because ad revenue is going down. You got to kind of think of it a little bit like, what do your subscribers and what are your viewers, what what would fit to the content that you're producing? Well, and I agree. And there's tons of websites out there, guys, that if you don't want to um, get into making patches or shirts or whatever, that will do it for you happily and take a cut. And uh, that is one of the, the things that I have kind of pushed back on. But so many people are asking us for Big Family Homestead shirts and some of the funny things that I say, you know, silly yada, yada, yippee, skippy and all that kind of stuff. Uh, that we're we've started looking into it, and one of the companies that I think we're going to end up working with don't don't quote me on it, but it's called Spread Shirt. And what you do is you go on and you make an account, and they give you your own little website, just like you would if you had like an Etsy store. And um, you basically upload your designs or you build them in their store. And it took me all of ten minutes to upload my logo and make a bunch of cool looking stuff and then they can pick from oh i want a hoodie or i want a hat or i want a bag or i want a this and it, there's no um numbers that they have to hit if you only sell one you only sell one and what happens then is they actually mail it to the person who bought it and you just get your cut and so it's so easy and so nice that um i mean I, i'm seriously probably gonna end up doing it pretty soon just because, you know, everybody wants to have, you know, everybody has to have clothes legally, I guess, uh, for most places you go. And um, why not slap a big old, big family homestead logo on you? And, and because people want to, people want to help out. And, you know, if that gives us two or $3 or whatever it is, you know, I, I'm, I'm glad that you got a shirt that you like. And I'm really super glad that you're supporting our family because we're blown away and grateful. And it's a win-win for everybody, but there are services out there, guys, that will do this kind of stuff, whether it's stickers, shirts, you name it, and um, it won't cost you anything to set up. It's just a little bit of time. So I'd suggest seeking those places out. Yep. No, it's a, that's a great point is you don't have to go it alone. You don't have to be at home making these things. I mean, that's another one that some people do is they'll make different things. They'll have an Etsy store or that kind of stuff. Um, I don't know much about the Etsy stuff. I'm uh, not very uh, creative, so I hadn't looked into that. I don't know too many people who do it, but uh, um, I know that that's another option too. But I know that the shirt thing is pretty popular, especially with a lot of the YouTube channels of having a shirt just kind of cool to, hey, guess what? I got this or I did that or that kind of stuff. So, Yeah, um, and so there's, there's that. But um, I also wanted to go back just briefly with Patreon because, yes, it is the obvious one. Um, and here's the thing. We have a Patreon account, and I'm not ashamed to say it, uh, because a lot of channels get a bunch of garbage. They, the people will go, oh, you're an e-beggar, or you're this, or you're that. I can't remember the last time I talked about our Patreon or stuck a, a logo up. But even, even if I did talk about it every time, the people that are complaining are the ones that, that they, don't, you know, they don't really care how much work you've put into the product that you're giving them for free. And it just bothers them even seeing that there's a logo up there. It's like, okay, guys, you got this all wrong. You knew, if you knew how much work goes into this stuff, you might be a little more patient. You might be a little more understanding. And so for me, our Patreon account is great because it's that little push where it's like, man, people are behind you. You got to keep doing this. Because when you're a YouTuber, you're going to have bad days. You're going to have bad weeks. There will be people that will come after you for no apparent reason in your chats and they'll get into your world and they will be nasty they're just nasty and those moments where you got patreon folks going hey i just want you to know i can only afford a dollar a month but i believe in what you guys are doing please keep doing it 
And that is huge when you start getting all the garbage and the attacks to go, you know what? There are 40 people out there that say, keep going. You know, I'll give you two bucks. I'll give you five bucks. I'll give you a dollar. It's not the money that's the important thing. It's just knowing there are people that are backing you up that are, um, that are wanting you to keep going. And that, that is huge. Can I add one other thing on Patreon that a lot of people don't talk about, which is, you know, Patreon and those types of services, a lot of people want to give. And they don't know how to, or they don't know a way to, or there's not a mechanism to, you don't want to just throw some cash in an envelope and, you know, mail it off to somebody. Patreon and some of these services give a secure way for a person to be able to donate or to support something that they believe in without having the security of their identity being stolen. Whose website am I actually giving this credit card to? You know, those types of things. And I think that's one of the things that I tell a lot of people when they're thinking, hey, I want to set up this or I want to do that. I'm like, okay. If these people are interested in supporting you and your channel and, and either giving you funds or buying something from it, you have to make sure that you support and secure their data and make sure that it's not done kind of partially. You don't want to cut a corner on something like that. I'd, I'd feel really bad if somebody said, hey, I want to support Brad's channel or The Weekend Homestead or whatever channel it is, and then all of a sudden you have a scenario where their credit card got stolen because you didn't have a secure site or any of that kind of stuff. And a lot of people don't know how to set that stuff up. That's why services like Patreon are great because you can sign up, you can set up an area where if somebody wants to give, they can, and it's in a secure way that their credit card's not going to get stolen. You don't have to give your credit card number to Brad. You give it to the Patreon folks, and they take care of everything for you. So that service is there to also serve the security of the people who want to be supportive. Well, and, and another word on Patreon, and, and I want to move on after this because we could probably spend a whole ton of time on that. Uh, there are channels, guys, that are actually being, you know, you know, censored by YouTube, and they're not allowed to say certain things. They're not allowed to bring up certain topics. If you talk about blah in the Middle East, or if you say this terrorist group, and you say they're bad, YouTube is censoring people. And so there's a lot of YouTube creators that are moving their content off of YouTube and putting it on Patreon because they're tired of getting just shut up and shut down. It's not just, you know, Hey, a pat on the back. It's, it's that it's another way that you can express what you want to say without YouTube shutting you down. And I think that's an important thing to point out that it's an option where, I mean, there's still a little bit of free speech left, but you know, it's, it's a, it's another option for you to do it where YouTube won't, will not or cannot or should not rather uh, censor that content. Most definitely. That's, uh, I mean, there's so many different ways that you can go with this and so many different ideas and things like that. I just, I don't know. I, I think that it's one of those things where don't tackle all of them either. Like anytime we talk about any of these things, you know, we're trying to give a lot of information so you can pick one thing that might work good for you. Not all these things will work well for everything that you're doing or for, you know, your channel pick something that works good for you, something you feel comfortable with. Maybe you don't want to do any of these things. You say in your mind, I'm not going to do any of these things until I hit 5,000 subscribers or I hit 100,000 views or I hit, you know, some number or something like that. Give yourself a goal and then like, hey, when I hit this point in my YouTube career or my channel, okay, now I'm going to try this one thing. Because if you try everything that we talk about and on top of that, you're trying to produce content and answer questions and wherever else, you could potentially burn out. And that's a real thing that happens in the YouTube world is burnout, you know, where you get into so many things and then it's a beast that you can't feed. Dude, I, I agree 100%. Um, and it does not, to me, just looking at the clock and looking at what we got here, we're not going to get through all these nine. We're going to have to come back next week, but we've got a couple more that I think we can get through. But before we do, man, uh, a lot of you guys may not know this. But Will is having a 40th birthday this week. Can you believe it? Look at that baby face. Make some noise so the thing changes over. Yeah, look at this. Um, I'm turning 40 coming up here in the uh, on Saturday. It's going to be interesting. So, Well, I, I can't make it up to where you live, bro. But Claire did make you uh, something a little special. She, she baked you a, a delicious, you know, chocolate and vanilla. Um, this, this, is, this doesn't have kale in it, does it? No. It does not have kale. So we made you a cupcake, and I want you to have this, bro. So here you go. Hey, buddy. Thank you. Thank you very much for the cupcake. This is awesome. You're awesome. And this yeah. is 
Well, oh wait, hold on. No, well, he's jumping the gun. I forgot. I, I I've got a napkin to go with that, man. So uh, oh, yeah, I need that. Hold on. I really grab that. Get that off your face. You got a little something there. Thank you. All right, here. There we go. So as we move on, let's talk about licensing. But before we talk about licensing, let's talk about what just happened. Well, there I dropped the pen. Is what happened. <laughs> um, Will, this was Will's idea to do a funny little camera trick. Just here you go, got you a cupcake, and then he grabs it and brings it back down. And it's not it's not the cupcake trick that's important. It's being creative that's important. That didn't cost us anything to do that, guys. It didn't cost us, well, it cost me a dollar because I had to go to, you know, the store and buy it. And But other than that, and by the way, Kroger, the lady, I'm standing there looking at all their cupcakes. It's really funny. And they all have all these like crazy looking things. And there's like, you know, a spaceship in this one and that and that one. And she's like, can I help you? I'm like, I just want a regular cupcake. <laughs> and she's <laughs> like, I'll make you one. So she went and made it. Uh, but the point is, you can get creative with stuff, and it doesn't have to cost you a daggone thing. Just sit down and, and figure out, okay, what would make my show just a little better? What would make this video a little bit better? How can I have fun with it? Well, let me talk about something, too. I just I got to give somebody some credit on this. And I want to give a little bit more backstory. Remember last week we talked about collaboration and finding something to do with another channel that would be kind of fun and different and things like that? We did this as an example to kind of show, you know, well, first off, Brad said, hey, it'd be cool to say something about your uh, – birthday and everything. But the other thing was we thought of like, how could you collaborate? So I sent him an idea and I said, Hey, what if we did some kind of thing where like you're handing me something through the camera and it looked like that. And then I said, what if we did a cupcake or something like that? So he went to the store and bought a cupcake and then he sent me a picture of it and he said, Hey, here's the cupcake. We're going to use it. <laughs> oh, I looked at it. I'm like, I meant a chocolate cupcake with white frosting because they don't sell very many cupcakes that have the 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 yellow frosting and the chocolate. I'm like, oh, how are we going to do this? So I got to give Mrs. W a little bit of credit here. I sent that picture to her while I was at work, and I said, hey, what can we do here? I came home, and she had exactly the exact like paper thing, whatever. She made the cupcake at home, and she's like, here's a couple versions of it, so you guys can figure out which one looks close. And literally, if you put the two photos next to each other, they looked exact. I'm like, awesome. That, so that, then we, go ahead. I was going to say, so then we just did this setup, and this whole time we've been talking, I've had it sitting right here above my camera, and then, you know, Brad, we, we tried it once ahead of time, like, hey, if you hand it across this way, how does it look, and then when do I pick it up and bring it back, and hopefully it looks good to you guys. Uh, um, yeah. Oh, and I'm going to give it back to Brad here. I'll just give it back to Brad. Yeah, no, that's really, thanks, bro. Well, I still got the stuff on mine, and what's oh. funny is that actually I had the curly Q top. She made the curly Q top, but I thought, He's never going to get one like that. It's going to be flat, so I smashed mine down. <laughs> I had to change mine out because I came and I sent him a picture. I'm like, look at the curly Q top. He's like, that's awesome. It looks just like the one did before I smashed the top of it. So so anyway, that the point is, guys, you can have fun with stuff. We've been talking for three or four minutes on a silly cupcake, maybe five or six, but it's been fun. And that kind of stuff will keep your, your audience engaged. And one of the things, and this is actually not on our top topic list for today, but one of the things that Will has mentioned again and again and again is tricks to keep them engaged. Questions um, that will be open-ended. Um, also, when he'll say, uh, I got to show you something, he'll get up and, and literally leave from his chair. And so you're just waiting. You're waiting. You're like, I, I got to know what I got to know what's happening. And then you'll come back. And those little tips will keep your audience engaged. And um, so I, I would encourage you to just think those things up. Like, what are different little things? We just had a six-minute bit on a cupcake. That is a dollar well spent in my mind. <laughs> well, and you can be creative on the stuff on your channel. You don't always just have to, you know, think of, hey, I'm going to do uh, another video about chickens or I'm going to do something about this or whatever it is. Find some other YouTubers that have content that you potentially could work with or whatever and come up with a way to, you know, connect with them. Throw an idea, collaborate a little bit between each other, and it's awesome because you get great content for both audiences to enjoy. Amen. And something you have done throughout this whole evening is you've taken those glasses on and off. And how many of you guys noticed it, number one? And secondly, here's a cool thing you could do in a video. Every shot you have, put on a different shirt. Just see what people see if they even comment on it. Because that's the kind of thing that you can engage with people and they'll think you're quirky and fun or whatever it is. 
It, it, I mean, I, I, I love it. And, and by the way, I think you, you might have like a little eyelash there. On no, your... I, I tried to get glasses that were just like, Brett. hold on. I got something here in my eye. Hold on just a second. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. okay. So I tried to get glasses that were very similar to Brad's and I was going to try to get the hat and everything like that. And my, my whole, my whole thing was actually, so when the camera's not on me, Claire can still see what's going on. So every week I try to figure out ways to funny. get him to crack up the whole time on the backside of this while everything's going on. And it just kind of keeps it light and fun. So that is, that is awesome. Now, do you want to talk about licensing? I mean, we've got like 10 minutes left. Do you want to talk about licensing or digital products? I like digital products for this because we're, we're in the process of making a cookbook, but do you want to go ahead and jump in on that one? Yeah, let's talk about digital products. So I got an email from somebody. And by the way, if you want to get a hold of me, you can either send a message to Brad or you can, if you're a subscriber on my channel, you can send me a message that way. So just go over to the channel and subscribe. Or the other one is, is will at the weekendhomestead.com. Uh, you can send an email there and I can answer questions and I'll bring it back. And Brad and I can kind of talk about it. But one of the things that somebody came to me with is, uh, digital product how could i produce a cookbook i have my grandma's recipes and i want to make a cookbook with uh her stuff and uh, put it out there how do i even start and the email that i sent to the person is i said well do you have microsoft office on your computer or word or anything like that and uh they said yeah i said well then just take that out and start typing it up and then when you're done there's ways that you can lock that up and make that into a digital product. You don't have to buy anything special or fancy to make a cookbook or make a, a journal or something like that. So I guess, what are your thoughts? Uh, well, I'm not going to name names because I, um, I don't know if this channel would want me talking about uh, them specifically in terms of uh, their digital products. But I know some channels that have cookbooks and they're they're mid-sized channels, you know, 40-ish thousand subscribers. And they have told me that they they basically they don't even mess with printed books anymore because they make almost all profit off of your, your production of the ebook, and then you can charge less. So instead of somebody saying, you know, oh, I'd sell you this cookbook for $15.99 or 15 bucks, they'll sell you the same dang thing for ten dollars and they actually made out better because it was the cost versus you know printing the book and shipping the book and all that kind of stuff and i know that that recipes are something that people just love to death and and not only that but when you purchase something from somebody's uh you know merchandise if you will like a, a, a channel that you like it's in a small way it kind of connects you to them and you feel like boy that's really cool i have a connection to this channel uh, and, and when it comes to cooking, man, recipes are one of those things that people just love. Uh, and in terms of uh, ebooks and all that kind of stuff, I think that is absolutely the way to go. Uh, although I am one of those people that says print it out because you never know if your, your computer will go down. Um, but ebooks are incredible. The thing I like about ebooks is you never run out of stock. As example, let's say you do a promo on your website or on your blog or whatever it is with your ebook, and you have 15 of them printed, and 20 people come to your uh, site to buy it, and you only can sell 15 because you only have 15 of them made. In ebook, there's no limit to the number. So if all of a sudden it goes viral or a lot of people hook onto it or they buy it for whatever reason, it'll never be out of stock. That's the biggest issue that I have. And I know, Brad, you like to print things out. Me, I live in an all digital world. I'd rather have it digitally. Because I usually remember when we talked two episodes ago, we talked about backing stuff up on a drive or a hard drive or whatever it is. You can do that with your cookbooks. I mean, they're tiny. And uh, it's if you ever need to print out a recipe, you can always print it out to use it or whatever in your kitchen. But, you know, I'm, I'm in the digital world. And a lot of the people who are on YouTube, you know, are in the digital world. So. Dude, I want to continue on this because it looks like we've got one, two, three, four, five. We didn't even touch on and it's nine. But before we do, talking about Brad moving into the digital world here, it's really funny because when I was when I was in the the world world, it, it was recording Studio City. But I never really was in the kind of computer tech side. But I got to tell you what, on your recommendation of the Google Home Wi-Fi thing that we were talking about last week, I went and got it because we had a very close friend of the the family of the channel and she's actually here in the uh, chat jm at the nut house was here 
at our at our fan, at our home, and it was so exciting. And I wanted to make sure that we we could get some you know video and do some live streaming. And I was afraid that I wasn't going to be able to do it because my router stinks. And so I went and got the three pack. And um, I got to tell you what, everything you said about it and more, it was so easy to set up. And and it, the mesh network, it just I'm just looking at my phone. It's like okay, this one's set up. You want to set up another one? Okay, that one's set up. You want to set up another one? And I have one of those points in our school room. I got one of the points in my room right over here and the one over in our kitchen. And it covers the entire area of our entire acre, front to back, 800 feet. And it's amazing. We were live streaming from our goat yard. No, I mean, that's uh, out of all the products and things we've ever talked about, I, that is the one item that I've gotten the most emails about and people saying, hey, how does this work or why is that or whatever? Because it is super easy i i i recommend it to people because i i get a lot of phone calls from people saying hey my router's not working or whatever it is every person i've ever recommended a google system to since i've gotten one of these i've never gotten a phone call nobody's ever called me and said hey can you help me set this up or you know you know how to get it going or anything like that they just literally take the thing out of the box plug it in touch a button on their phone first one set up do you want to set up another one no i'm just gonna have one i only need one because i have a small area nope i got the two pack or the three pack because i needed to cover more areas i mean i cannot recommend that product enough well and there is a link down in the description below but the funny thing was um when i realized when jm at the nut house was going to be here I'm like oh crud i gotta hurry up and go get one of these things because i don't want to miss out on the opportunity of being able to live stream and do all that kind of stuff and so the only place that had it was a 40 minute 45 minute ride from where I was at. So I went and checked Best Buy and they had it. And I'm like, I'm going to get it. And when I got there, um, I walk in the door and they're like, what can we help you with? And I'm like, I need a router. I'm looking at the um, the, the Google Wi-Fi routers. And the guy goes, really? And I said, yeah, why? He said, it's only been in our system for two minutes. It's right over here. He went to go get it. And the Google rep was still standing there. The guy who actually put the product on the shelf from Google it was the only one they had, and I got it because I just happened to get on at the right time, and they hadn't even had it in their store for three minutes. And the guy's like, well, can I at least take a picture of it? The Google guy, because I don't have another one. <laughs> yeah, no, it was, uh, it's, it's something that's relatively new. The, the, the item that I, I like to talk about most about it is it, for all the technical things that you do with YouTube, and especially to this audience, a lot of you guys are creators and you're producing things for YouTube. And Brad, I don't know if you've uploaded videos since you started using this thing, but when I use either live streaming or I upload a video to YouTube or interact at all to any of the Google products, my connection speed is at least 10%, maybe even 15% faster than it was before. So for people who live in rural areas who have poor internet or, um, you know, marginal internet, and they want to try these different things, try something like this, because that might make the difference between being able to cut your download time in half, or in a third, or even just knock 20% off of it, so that then you can get more content out a lot faster. You know what, you just gave me a great idea for a topic next week, is internet in rural areas, because we have had, in our life, we've had fiber optic internet, We've had regular cable internet. We've had satellite internet. And then we've had HughesNet. And okay. then we've had 4G. And let me tell you what, there's some ugliness to be seen with those things. And um, I think it's a great dovetail to this product uh, to talk about what works well, what doesn't work well, why it works. Because there's probably a lot of you guys out there who are homesteaders going, my internet's garbage. I can't, I can't, I couldn't live stream. And so let's figure out how we can talk about what is going to be um, okay, unusable, or great. You can take that on out of there. Claire, Claire's running out because my son who's in the army, David, is calling. And um, that with that cue, I actually have to get going, guys. All right, buddy. Well, it's been a great week. If people have questions, email Brad or I, and uh, we'll try to answer them. I see there's a couple folks uh, asking what the price of the router is. The link down below, I don't know what the price is right now. It fluctuates depending on, I think they had a promo last week on it or whatever, but check it. It's 
either 99 or 129 or something like that. It was something like that. I paid under $300 for the three pack. By yeah. like There's a discount if you buy the three pack. I know that. So, and I, I couldn't believe how, you know, what was funny. There was no instructions in the, uh, there was not an instruction manual in the box on the box itself. They just said, plug this one in and then it'll tell you what to do. And it did. <laughs> I was going, where's my manual? I need a manual. I can't, I can't operate without a manual. Of course, I'm going to end the show with my same thing I always do. If you can, before you leave, hit the thumbs up. If we hit 100 thumbs up, we'll do this again next week. Rock and roll, dude. And by the way, before I do go, please, if you're not already subscribed to the Weekend Homestead, open that tab up, go on over, and hit that subscribe button because Will is here because he's, he's wanting to help us out. He's wanting to grow the community, and this is great information, guys. So as a thank you to him, please jump on over there and make sure you're subscribed. It might be a surprise video on Saturday also for my birthday. Oh, oh, oh. maybe I got another cupcake in store for you. <laughs> Great. All right, dude. We'll see you. Thanks a lot, man. Bye-bye.